site is a greenhouse gas, and without a way to filter it out of the atmosphere, the Earth's temperature will continue to rise. Now, through the Coastal Plant Restoration Project, scientists at the Salk Institute in La Jolla are using wetland plants to fight climate change. Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis shows us how. Once the carbon is locked down in there, it, any decay or anything like that gets locked into that soil. So these are great storage devices. We are getting in the mud today. This show and tell is brought to you by Todd Michael, a research professor at the Salk Institute for Biological Studies. Todd, along with other researchers, are studying the genomes, the genetic makeup of plants, including this bed of typha, to understand their adaptation to this environment. The goal is to accelerate their growth to create a new generation of wetlands to capture and remove carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. This project is called the Harnessing Plants Initiative. Joseph Noel, another lead researcher on this project at the Salk Institute, walks us through what makes these plants key in fighting climate change. Is that they produce a substance in their roots called cork, yeah. or the fancy term for that is subarin. It's a huge molecule that's full of carbon. The other cool thing about it is that when it's left behind in the sediment, it doesn't decompose. Oh. So every carbon atom in that giant molecule called subarin comes out of this carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So it's an effective way of actually sucking greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere, lowering it, and then burying it in the sediments. So this is not just a scenic view along the five, but a thriving ecosystem that researchers believe will bring new life in combating this global issue. And they'll actually start to grow again. Let's see, oh, there it is. Oh, nice. So look, there's a new seedling coming up. So it grows on this stem and then creates new buds each season. The research done here in San Diego is working towards efforts in expanding the wetlands ecosystem worldwide. Rising sea levels, increased planet temperatures, and human development have contributed to the roughly 70% reduction in the wetlands globally over the last century. The success of restoration efforts could increase our planet's ability to bury up to 5 gigatons or 5 billion tons per year of carbon, which is about 25% of the excess carbon dioxide generated by human activity. And the ultimate goal is to find varieties of native species that are better able to adapt to future climates so that when you lose these wetlands, um, you can go back and restore them in a more effective manner by putting back the best performing variety. So while we're talking about how these plants are key in fighting climate change by storing carbon, wetland plants have been critical to us here in San Diego. They are our buffer and clean our water from excess nutrients, fertilizer, sediments, and polluted runoff to maintain the health of our ecosystem and our bellies. All the fish and shellfish that uh, we're interested in and all, we also um, eat are all reproducing in lagoons like this. And so these are the barriers that really protect our waters and clean our waters. This is pickleweed? Pickleweed. Oh, okay. Yep. And it tastes good too. Just a little salty. For CBS 8, I'm Chief Meteorologist Carlene Chavis.